Hey guys, welcome into the Puggle Reborn channel. Today I have a new build guide for you. It is the Nish Sniper. And here he comes. Whew, and there goes the booms, okay? Everybody told me, hey, you need to get more fireworks. There wasn't enough fireworks. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to buy all of them and just unload them on the screen. So there you have it. Anyways, besides that, I want to get this out of the way. Did you know that only 3.9% of all Battle Builder players have beaten the Jirok? What does that tell you? Well, only 5% of all people have beaten some sort of late game legendary location. That was amazing to me to find out. Most people like to play against the late game crisis. And if that is you, this build is a far and beyond what you're looking for. And it can be really helpful on certain locations. We'll go over that in a little bit. So just so you know, for the mid-max meta gamers, you already are ahead of this one, but still it's a lot of fun and still a lot of help per situations. Now to check out the essentials for this sniper build, the niche sniper. Uh, it's kind of self-explanatory, but I have to get it out there. The range skill is definitely number one. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory. You're a sniper. I mean, you gotta snipe things. But uh, no, but the truth still remains. Where would I put my sniper build at? Well, I would want him to be at at least 95. Some people would still consider that low. If you're if you're going after priority targets, there are certain perks that you can get to definitely boost this to make it more effective. If you fail, you're gonna see that through the video footage to the right, of course. That I ended up creating ways to get more effective off of my shots and uh, yeah so keep watching for that the next stat that i would say is probably the most it's really tough the next few stats because there could be a few people val or value things differently the first one for me would be fatigue and the reason fatigue is because you're going to either shoot off a lot of arrows trying to proc like fast adaptation to give you 10 more percent per shot or you're going to end up going for uh you the type of build that debuffs the opponent but that to me is still like a different type of build and that would be with overwhelm as a high initiative higher initiative is definitely a huge portion of this so why don't we go with fatigue first then initiative second you can still make a really heavy archer and be very effective especially if he's over a hundred range skill which a lot of people would probably prefer now with that being said being higher in the initiative order being number three is that you can shoot the priority target before he can make his move or you can uh, just just get at that get that work done quicker because the faster you kill that priority target like a necromancer like a shaman or goblin shaman you're gonna be way ahead of the curb think of doing the legendary location the goblin city and you take I believe it's three shamans I believe it's three shamans so if you hit each of those shamans killing them guys that that whole fight changes you know turns a new leaf so definitely worth thinking about there the next thing that i would say just going into this build in itself would be the range defense since everyone's going to have a different opinion on range defense some people say i go for 30 i go for this the way i handle it is i get the if if there's an opening for good range defense skills as you can see on this brother i went to 17 it's definitely worth warranting but I do like the anticipation perk because I really want this brother to have every opportunity to stay hidden cloaked behind all the guys to get those deadly shots. It's more of a role play mentality that's going on in my head with this one. Some of the additive bonuses to having this sniper as well is in the melee. I ended up going up to 73. I am so thankful that I got to that point, especially because when you have a perk like fast adaptation, it plays to that skill as well. That's why I ended up giving him a whip because when things go south and you need to disarm somebody, it actually works out pretty well. It helps out quite a bit. Now let's kind of check out these shots and understand what's going on. There's a clear reason why I have higher fatigue. I like to be around 100 when it comes to this type of character because every shot that you make out of a quick shot is 12 fatigue buildup. A total of uh, 24 buildup. Now that's not including the mastery. The mastery actually takes off 25% of the fatigue skill back. Uh, or You know, you end up getting that fatigue back. So it should be uh, 15 per shot and then of course 25 per aim shot. So big time deal there. It goes a lot faster than you'd expect. And if all you're doing is quick shots, that's a big deal. And you got to think also, how, how fast are you going to go through your quivers with only 10. If you get the unhold hides, you can turn those into, of course, bigger pouches. So there's obviously an option there to be working on. But in particular, 
every distance in front of you, if you have a range, like my character can see eight range, this thing can only see seven tiles, that's your base range, uh, uh, um, um, uh, I can't think of it, the bow. But when you have the mastery, it actually increases your range one, so now it's seven, it should be six though otherwise. So that kind of got jumbled up there, but it's supposed to be six. It is seven because I have the bow mastery. Definitely worth doing. You get an extra range here with the aim shot to eight, and I can see up to eight. So I have the ability to shoot that far away. Hopefully that makes sense. Kind of listen to it back if that didn't. Besides that though, every tile ahead. So if, if I'm shooting seven tiles ahead, I lose 4% of my range skill per tile out. So this is why it's so important to have really high range skill. Even some, like again, people would say that 95 is still pretty low. For me, that's it's fine because of how I'm building this guy out. But if you can get into the hundreds, it's gonna do you a big deal of difference. Now, when we start talking about the aim shot, it's one shot, costs eight, eight AP. So you're just standing there, aim, you're getting a plus 10% chance to hit right off the bat. And every tile going out is negative 2%. So once you get to five tiles out, then you break even. And it's it's down to your range skill, and the next three tiles up to eight ends up being negative six percent, uh negative six percent to your skill. So just understand that a lot of people think there's no real difference except for the plus ten. There's not. I mean there is. I mean there's this there is the negative two compared to the negative four. So just something definitely to look at. Alright, so now let's start going into what type of brothers you need for this. So there's definitely a bunch of different types of backgrounds that you can go for for archery, but there is one that his head and shoulder above the competition, and you wanna look there first. It's gonna be the hunter. The hunter has great skills that can give you the absolute, absolute max when it comes to range. Skill you can get up to 59. That is pretty sweet. But then the next one down would probably be poacher. Then I would go like cell swords, a really good one as well. Although you are paying a lot for an archer at that point. Normally you uh, multi-class with that type of character. And then you would go like beast masters, a good one. Uh, I don't know about boyer, not my favorite, but it definitely is an option as well. There's a lot of brothers that are kind of in the same range when it comes to the range skill. The main thing you want to look for though, guys, and I didn't say this earlier, is the two stars in, in range skill or higher. One star is fine. You can make it work. It's, you know, there's other builds for lower range skill that I personally think work out great. And we'll talk about that in a different video, but this is still a, a very, very fun, viable thing that you can do regardless with just, uh, with, with one. But I prefer two to three. Three is definitely where you're really starting to get the, the okay symbol coming out from me. Okay. So with that out of the way, now let's get into the perk. For every build that I end up doing, there is some things that need to be brought up, okay? There are interchangeable perks that I can definitely uh, admit could have come into play here for this, this particular brother. For instance, if I am really content with his range defense, which I, which I was once I ended up going anticipation, but I could have skipped out on Colossus, and some people may disagree with this, but you can skip out on Colossus and sometimes you can skip out on Nimble. If you have high enough range defense, things aren't gonna shoot you you're less of a target. Your your chance of actually getting uh, destroyed off of other archery is so minimal because there's so many other people on your line, or at least there is for me, that are more vulnerable, that, I, that it doesn't happen very often. If you get hit with an arrow with the, this type of brother, it's going to be pretty rare. So definitely want to keep your eye on that. You could get rid of this. You could get rid of Nimble. It's not like the most recommended thing in the world, obviously, and I know I'm going to get uh, some flack for that, but still, you could do that and throw it otherwise. Another thing too would be like gifted and quick hands. I like quick hands. I like the, the versatility of getting a weapon out or getting a arrows ready. Any of those scenarios helps out greatly in the fight. The, you know, gifted only just boosts all your stats, guys. Everyone's gonna say either it's a waste because there's other perks that are uniquely active during a fight. For instance, I could have gone with berserk and gotten an extra kill and extra shot but that's not exactly what this build is about so i didn't end up going that route but that's irregardless you could have gone with rotation you could have gone with footwork work and i think most people would agree that those should have been the ones to go for as well understand once again it's a niche sniper 
it's it's got its ways if you're smart about this bro this brother in particular you don't have to get in the conflict of everybody where you have to constantly rotate out or you have to uh, walk away the idea is to stay away from people and take out priority targets that is what this build is just so we're clear on that let's get into the other part of this that makes it work so starting out the first perk that i end up getting with the sniper here is the fast adaptation perk. Fast adaptation is so freaking fantastic early on all the way into the ultra late game. The reason why is because you're every time when you're early level, you're gonna miss a bunch. And when you miss, you're getting a 10%, a flat 10%. If you're if you're shooting and you have a 36% shot, but you're gonna see a lot on the screen here, a lot of 36% shots. And this extra 10% going up to 46 to hit a priority target is so nice, especially when you're talking about quick shot or even going into an aim shot it can definitely make a difference a lot of times what I like to do is I'll go like a uh, quick shot take a normal shot on somebody and then I'll try to shoot at the priority target giving and if I hit it great if I don't then the next turn I can use aim shot to be more effective and that's where fast adaptation is pretty much like giving you a named bow and that might sound a little like what a named bow yeah because pretty much you're getting an extra percentage chance to hit the very next turn which plays into my next perk, which is going to be Bullseye. So when a target is obscured, you get a massive debuff of 75% uh, because of the clear line of the sight of fire. So it takes your skill and it takes out 75% of your skill. So if I did have a 95% chance to hit something effectively, now I only get like a 20, 25 or 20, 20% uh, chance to hit whatever it is hidden behind coverage. Now the higher your range skill, of course, that affects things. This drops it to 50%. Now, even with 50%, you still have the debuff of the quick shot, which is still taking away four per tile away compared to two when you have an aim shot. I have to, these, there's so many numbers for this that you have to just kind of just keep your eyes focused on it, okay? You have a 50% it's 50% instead of 75, so obviously you're gonna have better stats, 25% better chance to hit. That does not mean when you go to aim at somebody, you're going up from 20 all the way up to 50. Wow, no, it doesn't happen. Though I will say there's many times where I get up to 43%, which is great. And if I miss a 43% shot, the next turn I'm over 50%. I love that. I love that with Bullseye. I think these two go hand in hand together. Very nice. I did end up going with quick hands, but I went with quick hands because again, the utility purposes to keep the arrows flowing, to keep the battle whip open. When you have a high enough skill range or like melee skill like 73, you can be versatile and take a weapon away or cause bleed on an, on an enemy that you know is going to die after their turn or it's coming up or whatever the priority deal is. Uh, Geis as well helps out with that. It just makes this build a little more uh, less one dimensional. The killing power of this is still very impressive, and so definitely not worth dismissing. Of course, once I ended up getting to the Bow Mastery, uh, it changed things a lot because of the range and because of the fatigue drop that I don't have to worry about. The next thing. Now, this is key. This is so key to this build. One of my favorite archer perks, and I will stand by this till my feet sink into the grave, and that is Headhunter. Headhunter is a must. In my opinion, this is one of the best perks in the game for archery, and uh, I will you'll see that on the screen. As many headshots as I got, or back-to-back -back headshot kills, it, oh, dude, guys, it is so good. It takes the damage. It gives you a plus 50% of your damage. It's so, it, you're, gonna, you're bound to hit somebody in the face, and it happens more often than you, you may expect. So definitely go this route. Get yourself that head hunter. And you know, if you're like me, afterwards you go nimble. I ended up going with Colossus. There's just so many different ways you can do this. And then finally, killing frenzy, because when you kill a priority target where you kill somebody before the priority target, the next target would be that much easier. If I had switched it up, if I had gotten rid of gifted, if I had gotten rid of quick hands, if I got rid of nimble or got rid of Colossus, however you may look at that, there's a lot of different things you can do. Number one, you could go crippling strikes. For the sake of fun, for the sake of injuring enemies before they come to your line is great. If you crip, if you hit some, a priority target, normally if you don't kill it, you're gonna injure it. Giving executioner might be the final blow, but it really depends because most things, the second shot will kill them. 
so it's not really the greatest thing in the world but if you are trying to kill other targets on the field getting ready to crash your line executioner is great as well pair those two together what can I say it works out great besides that I would say definitely footwork if I could go back I would have tried to get footwork instead you don't need to have berserk berserk is a great archery archery perk I, I'm not saying it isn't this build in particular is truly focused on trying to uh, snipe out play, play, or people and not have to blow through all your arrows so fast and then rely on the whip but there is that opportunity there's a lot of ways to play this guys it's a lot of fun Ultimately, the big mold for snipers that a lot of people try to go for is the Master Archer. And this is probably, this could have been a Master Archer. I thought about going that route because of the higher melee skill. But at the end of the day, he doesn't have the melee defense. He doesn't, uh, I, I don't know, I didn't end up going with the Overwhelmed because I wasn't focused on initiative. And look at what he has on him right now. It's not like initiative was going to be a huge priority. So yeah, again, Nish Sniper this is really what you want to do and let's get into that what does this thing supposed to do well it's supposed to snipe it's supposed to snipe the goblin shamans it's supposed to snipe the necromancers this thing can definitely do it these guys can definitely do it. they can make uh, a riff and change the the battlefield easily by killing those priority targets if there is a brother in need of a kill uh, you're gonna see also some of the clips where I'm killing orc berserkers and i did it with this bow in particular which granted the bow is is named you want to get to that point but i was able to kill an orc berserker in two shots in one video and three shots in another so if you go back i don't know if it's going to be on the screen or when but the point is is that you can be that effective with this archer and especially when you're hitting people in the head you're just you just when you hit somebody in the head if you hit somebody in the head go for somebody who has the higher chance to hit who has an exposed head because you're guaranteed to hit the head as long as you hit that target so if you hit somebody you had a 43 percent chance to hit someone and it's a headshot look for the next brother or next enemy rather and shoot for that one because it's going to be a headshot and once you get that kill then you're proccing the killing frenzy which again is just it's just this constant balance you have to understand where you're at how you're how you're going about this get on one higher ground you're gonna see I do that in some of the clips as well and I'm just shooting from there giving myself a better uh, b a better chance to hit all these different targets have some sort of height advantage that is definitely the way the other thing I would say is just um, just don't get <laughs> don't get caught I know that that's easy to say and again the perks could have changed but still just be smart about it get back back up a little bit if there's orc warriors a lot of people would say I wouldn't even bring an archer to an orc fight but you know what when you can pick off the little guys in the back like throwing spears and so on you kill them especially with the exposed heads on orc warriors once you get a headshot again focus the orc warrior now the next big thing would be legendary locations is this build worthy can you have it in a 20-man roster slot I'm gonna go with yes yes you can starting out mostly most of the time when I have 20 men in my roster there's always about three men that almost never see the battlefield that's just me people might differ but I usually have three brothers that could hit the battlefield so they just don't and this is one that I would use against Hexen. Hexen are like flawed to this sniper because while they are standing behind something, it is so easy. Set the sniper apart from other people. Just back when you start the combat, like move a space open for the sniper. They don't hex these snipers. Like they just don't. And if they do, they're not going to do anything if you stand in the way and he's got to pull a whip out and hit you. They're, they're, this is a pretty much a null and void build if somebody, if a, if for some reason a Hexen decides to uh, charm him. But if you give him a little bit of space and you go ham at that, if you can even get like three tiles closer, man, you are going to kill a Hexen so fast. She'll be, she'll be freaking, she, oh, she'll be crying to her little, her little puppets around her. So definitely really great for one of the legendary locations another one too that works out great is against the goblin city it's a great it's a great opportunity you can take out if you if you can get a shot at the goblin shaman most of the time they're up high on a hill or whatever but if you can get in a good position you can at least snipe out the guys that are causing you the biggest riff it does work it is effective i've done it before with this build and uh that's one of the first time i ever beat the goblin city i probably had um three archers like this and they were really good archers. I mean, I, they, I was definitely farther ahead. Probably, I was probably 110 on each archer, which again is really high. That's different. But at some point, you're going to get to that level, or you're going to find that archer that can do that much damage. It works great for that location. Other locations, you kind of falter a bit. Uh, you could use it in the sunken library 
um, f killing or destroying the phylacteries, there's another opportunity for you. If you build it out right, you protect that type of brother, it can definitely be effective. So now let's move into the pros and cons. Time permitted, we're gonna roll right through this. So number one is going to be, of course, priority target. Number two, the headshots. Being able to hit one person in the head who was hard to hit, you ended up getting that lucky shot. Focus on somebody else who has an exposed head. Usually, uh, I'd say about 80% of the time, you're gonna get an instant kill. It's, it's like a free kill, essentially, is what headhunter becomes. And then the third uh, big thing you want to do is just utilize, utilize your brother for the better uh, trajectory and levels to be able to get better uh, better vantage of the, the terrain to kill more I don't know more enemies of priority so that would be the pros the cons would be if you are getting if you get caught by orc warriors you get caught by unholds pushing through the line getting right in their face getting smashed it's gonna be rough luckily there is a buffer for me with the nimble ability or, or having nimble that's definitely gonna help but at the same time you don't you, the object is to keep your guy away okay so d d don't get in the spot where you're you're getting caught the next thing is sometimes it's not worth having this build on the line in big overwhelming odds if you're getting overwhelmed by nachos that could be a problem if they get to you and you have just a whip you can still defend yourself but melee is not your strong suit melee defense is not your strong suit rather so you definitely have to be aware of that and uh, yeah really those are the two the big ones is just stay away from enemies and know when to get out of the way you know don't don't like don't overly aggressive go after after the priority target because one more shot will do it even though you're not in the right turn order to take that shot so that would be about it guys and that's gonna do it for this guide here please if you did like this hit that like subscribe for more content like this I got a lot of guides coming your way this one was very fun for me to to really get back to my roots and using the war bow I've, I've taken a big step away just because I really like the handguns, uh, nothing personal to the to the bow, but it does remind me of how efficient you can be taking on those bad boys in the far back. So without further ado, guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye.